guys, welcome back. Now today, we're going to talk about some NHL trades featuring Colin Miller, Andre Burakovsky, Eric Halla, and even more. Now, since the NHL draft ended, we've seen a lot of different important trades happen throughout the NHL. So what are these trades all about, and which teams won these trades? Watch till the end to find out. And over the course of last week, there were a lot of different NHL trades that I personally wasn't able to cover on this channel due to some busyness over the past week. But now I'm able to give my full thoughts on them with a little bit of hindsight as well. Now we're going to be going through oldest to newest trades, the oldest being on the 24th, I believe, of this month. And when it comes to these trades, there will be six that I cover in this video and six that we'll talk about. Now for the first deal that happened on the 24th, we have the Dallas Stars and the Philadelphia Flyers exchanging forwards. A pretty solid deal at that. Now, for the Dallas Stars, in the trade, they get Ryan Hartman, an RFA from the Philadelphia Flyers. To the Philadelphia Flyers back, they get Tyler Pitlick. And as a Dallas Stars fan, I was pretty shocked to see this trade, but I'm actually a pretty big fan of it. If Ryan Hartman does stay, if he does sign as an RFA or UFA, whatever he might be at this point, I think it is a pretty good trade for the Dallas Stars. Tyler Pitlick is a guy that's a pretty average forward. He's an decent four for a third line forward if you need him in that role, but not too much else. Again, when he is healthy, he is solid, but Ryan Hartman has the potential to be a top guy in Dallas. I see that as the role he is if they do end up signing him. Now, Dallas, for some reason, didn't qualify Ryan Hartman, so right now he's technically a UFA, but I don't really see Dallas letting him go into free agency and talk of other NHL teams. I mean, they're going to get a deal done if they can, and if they do, I think Ryan Hartman is a pretty solid player. He's not a top two guy. He's not a first line guy by any means, but I think he can be solid. He was a little bit rough in Philadelphia, especially offensively, but I think if he can return to form like he was back in Chicago, I think he'd be a very solid guy in that middle six. And given a guy up like Tyler Pitlick, a guy who already wasn't too valuable for Dallas, I think it's a good trade, and in the end, I think the Dallas Stars do win this trade. Now, for the next trade, we're going to talk about the trade that happened a couple of hours after the Ryan Hartman deal. We had a pretty solid one between the Chicago Blackhawks and the Carolina Hurricanes. Now, the trade details goes as follows. To the Chicago Blackhawks, you have Calvin DeHaan and Alexi Sorella, and to the Carolina Hurricanes, you have Gustav Forsling and Anton Forsberg. And this is a pretty weird deal, in my opinion. Now, this fall in the line of the cap dump trades we've been seeing, especially recently. Again, I don't think it's a fair deal for the Carolina Hurricanes when it just comes to players, but they get some more cap space, and that likely is a lot better for them as they have guys like Sebastian Ajo coming off the books. So I think this was definitely a move to get cap off the books to get some for other players. Possibly in free agency, we could see it happen. But I think for the Carolina Hurricanes, to look at this as a pure player deal, I think is a little bit unwise because I think the Carolina Hurricanes are definitely using that cap for something else. Again, Calvin Hahn, I think was like at $4 million or something like that. He had a hefty contract that was just signed last offseason. So I think for Carolina, there's a bigger picture here rather than just this trade. When it comes to this deal, I can definitely see where Carolina is going for. When it comes to their cap space, we'll see if they do anything with that, if they'll do anything at all. But I think for Carolina, getting that cap space and getting away that contract, I can see why they did it. But it doesn't really mean they won the trade. When it comes to Chicago, getting a guy like Calvin DeHaan, who will be pretty solid in the defense, and getting, honestly, Alexi Sorella, who's one of the better prospects in the entire NHL, I think is an awesome obvious win for them. And while Carolina, yes, does get cap space, which is very, very valuable, Chicago gets the players that they kind of need right now. Now for the next trade, we have the Colorado Avalanche and the Arizona Coyotes having a pretty interesting exchange. Now, this was probably the most minor out of all the trades we're going to talk about here today, but it still is worth noting. Now, to the Arizona Coyotes, they end up getting Carl Soderberg, and to the Colorado Avalanche, they end up getting Kevin Connaughton and a 2020 third round pick. I think this trade is very important for a lot of different reasons. First one being the Arizona Coyotes are buying players, which is very fascinating. When it comes to Arizona, getting a guy like Carl Soderberg, it tells us that they want to make the playoffs next year and want to be competitive. I don't think it's the greatest deal for them whatsoever, but getting a guy like Carl Soderberg, who could be a decent third-line guy, had a pretty solid year this past season. I think when it comes to Soderberg, he'll be decent in Arizona. He'll get a lot of playing time for sure. And the other big thing coming out of this deal is the Avalanche and them clearing off that contract. Contract. I don't think getting rid of Carl Sober means that they're not going to try and contend. I think it means they're going for something even bigger. Now, we saw some rumors last week after the trade that they might be going for Artemi Panarin. That was pretty much just sunk in the water. That is nothing to be found right now. So, I don't think they're going to have to go after a guy like Artemi Panarin, but they can go after some big guys. It might not be in free agency. We might not see a gigantic free agency signing from them, but we could see a couple of big trades, kind of like how New Jersey got P.K. Subban for pretty much a capped up. 
I think that's what Colorado is really aiming for right now, having that cap space. They have almost $40 million in cap space right now, which is just insane when you look at the talent that that team has right now. And when it comes to Colorado, again, getting a guy like Carl Soderberg out the books, he was with the team for quite a long time, so that for that franchise, it's a little bit sad to see him go. But I think he should be good in Arizona. Good enough to where, yes, a third-round pick in Kevin and Conrad, is too not too much for Arizona to give up. So I think it helps them for sure. And for Avalanche, getting rid of that cap space, I think it also helps them. So I think it's a win-win scenario for both teams here, but I'm going to get a winner. It would definitely be the Colorado Avalanche. Now for the next trade, and a pretty big one involving the Vegas Golden Knights and the Carolina Hurricanes. Now, to the Carolina Hurricanes, they end up getting Eric Hall from the Vegas Golden Knights, and in exchange, Vegas ends up getting Nicholas Roy and a 2021 fifth round pick. Now this trade is very interesting for a lot of different reasons. First, notably the Vegas Golden Knights, who, when it came to cap space, Definitely, definitely need to get some contracts off the books. Now, when it came to Vegas, there was a lot of other names were being floated out there when it comes to getting rid of cap space. But Eric Halla wasn't exactly the first or second guy announced. When it came to Vegas, guys like Cody Eakin, I think, should be traded. David Clarkson, if you can get that contract off, should be traded. Those are the guys you should look at. Eric Hall is a pretty solid player, and Carolina gets a third line guy behind Sebastian Ajo, behind Jordan Stahl, who can definitely man a lot of different minutes and be pretty decent defensively. I think he'll do that for, for Carolina and be pretty solid at that. When it comes to Vegas, though, again, they need to get some cap space off the books. I'm not sure trading a guy like Halla is really the right way to go, but they do get that cap space off the books, which is huge for them. They're still over the cap, so they still have some work to do, but when it comes to Vegas, again, getting a guy like Eric Halla off the books is solid. When it comes to Nicholas Roy, he's kind of the guy that's gone under the radar in this trade. A lot of people saying that he's pretty much nobody, which isn't really true. He's 22 years of age, had a pretty solid season with Charlotte. Nothing spectacular, but he should be kind of a third line slash fourth line guy in the NHL, which is what Eric Halla is right now. When it comes to the winner of this trade, I kind of gun going back and forth because I think both teams kind of benefit from it. Vegas having the cap space, Carolina getting a solid player in Eric Halla. I will see the Carolina Hurricanes though are the winner of this trade. It's close but just barely close. Now for the next trade, arguably maybe the biggest trade of all of these, we have the Andre Burakovsky trade involving the Colorado Avalanche and the Washington Capitals. Now of course, to the Colorado Avalanche, we ended up having Andre Burakovsky and to the Washington Capitals back, you have Scott Kosmachuk, a 2020 second round pick and a 2020 third round pick. This trade is important for a lot of different reasons, most notably Andre Burakovsky, of course, and how long he's been in trade rumors. It seems like for the past two years, basically, he's been swirling around trade rumors, watching, trying to get rid of him the best they can, and finally, we do have an answer going to the Colorado Avalanche. Now, for Colorado, I can see him doing quite well there, alongside the guys like Nathan McKinnon. I can definitely see Burakovsky having a second chance and getting that second chance and using it quite well. He'll likely get a lot more playing time than he did in Washington, which will be good to see. I'm personally a big fan of Burakovsky, and as a division rival right there, but as a Dallas Stars fan, I kind of don't like him going to Colorado because I think he's going to do great there. Again, he's a guy that didn't have the greatest season, but I think can rejuvenate with a couple of great players, and Nathan McKinnon sounds about right. Now, for Washington, I wouldn't say a second and a third round pick is a bad return by any means when it came to how long Burakovsky has been in trade rumors. It's actually quite good, but that doesn't erase the fact that I think the Colorado Avalanche do win this trade. Getting a guy like Andre Burakovsky, a former first round pick, who has a lot of talent, I felt. And in the last, first couple of years, we really thought he was going to be maybe a first line forward for the Washington Capitals. That really didn't end up happening, but I think for the Colorado Avalanche, they'll turn him into something. It might not be the best player in the world, but I think he will be a top six guy in Colorado, and I hope he does because I think he'll be a great add to a forward core that desperately needs it. Now for the next big trade and the biggest trade that I'll mention in this video, we have the Colin Miller trade and it finally happened. Colin Miller is finally traded and we do have an answer. The trade between the Vegas Golden Knights and the Buffalo Sabres, I want to quite call it a blockbuster, but it still is a pretty huge trade. Colin Miller being linked to a lot of different NHL teams. The Buffalo Sabres seemingly able to swoop and, and get him at the last minute. Pretty solid trade for the Buffalo Sabres and you'll see it's a little bit of a highway robbery. When it comes to the trade details of this trade, Colin Miller ends up getting traded to the Buffalo Sabres and in exchange to the Vegas Golden Knights, they get a 2021 second round pick and a 2021 one fifth round pick. Now this trade is just mind blowing for the Buffalo Sabres. How they're able to get Colin Miller for such a low price. Now we know for Vegas the leverage is kind of low. They were trying to trade Colin Miller for a lot of months this time around. Again, Colin Miller was a guy that never really fit too well in Vegas, and we knew that all along Vegas needed some more cap space, and Colin Miller seemed like the right bet to give up. So the leverage, obviously, for Vegas was not the greatest. But to get a second round pick a year ahead of time and a fifth round pick for a guy like Colin Miller, who was a slam dunk top four defense 
defensemen. I, you can't tell me that other teams were not offering better than that, and honestly, I'm just surprised by what Vegas actually accepted. As some of you guys know, Vegas is my third favorite team. I like them quite a lot. I'm a pretty big fan of Colin Miller, too. In his time in Vegas, I liked him quite a bit. I felt like he was kind of coming into his own as a top four defenseman in the NHL. I thought he was a guy that they would keep long-term, try and keep for as long as possible, but he's the guy that end up sacrificing when it comes to cap casualties, and that just sucks. I wish that Colin Miller would have stayed with the Vegas Golden Knights. Obviously, that can't be the case, but I wish we would get a bigger return for a guy like him, a guy that will be a top four guy, top two guy in Buffalo, but no, a second round pick and a fifth round pick. I guess that's okay. For the Buffalo Sabres, they get a guy that has a tremendous shot, a great puck moving ability, a guy that's pretty solid in the defensive end. Again, I'm a pretty big fan of Colin Miller, so obviously I'm gushing about him quite a bit. But for the Buffalo Sabres, it's a great ad for them. A guy that will be, again, a top two guy on their defense, maybe behind a guy like Rasmus or Stalino when it comes to time on ice. But for Buffalo, again, they got a couple of acquisitions trade-wise, defensively, getting Montour and now getting Colin Miller. It's a decent defense now. Again, Miller is a huge ad for them. Montour, not the greatest wrist line not the greatest either, but Miller will be great for that defense and the defenseman that they kind of need right now. If I haven't made this obvious enough, I think the Buffalo Sabres, yes, do win this trade. When it comes to Vegas, yes, obviously it sucks to get a guy like Kyle Miller. When it comes to cap casualties, it's something that they kind of needed to make. I think the Buffalo getting a defenseman that can actually play defense is a pretty good upgrade. But of course, with this video, I need to hear your guys' thoughts down in the comments down below. So let me know what you think about all the trades that I mentioned in this video. What do you think about the trades and the players going back? And of course, the question on to you, which trades and which teams do you think won the most? But if you guys want some more grab videos just like this one, you can click on this card to watch my NHL room roundup surrounding free agency, names like Matt Duchesne, Artem Panarin, and Sergey Bobrovsky. That'll be it for today, guys. If you guys have enjoyed, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell if you haven't already. Again, comment down below your thoughts on the trades that I mentioned in this video and which teams won those trades. I'll see you guys next video or stream. Goodbye.